In this video, we discuss output, setup sheets, and post-processing specifically. This is where the rubber meets the road. Let's get started. We've come this far in our programming journey and we need to get output to the shop floor. First thing we're gonna talk about are setup sheets. How do we handle setup sheets? At the very beginning of this series, we installed a macro wizard to our platform. That macro wizard is our setup sheet generator, and we're going to go ahead and use that. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to first come down here to our tabs, and we're going to go to tools. And in our tools, it generally would look like this. So expand this out. You're looking for a button called macros. Go ahead and click on macros, and you'll get your macros dialog. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select macro libraries. And here it should load the library type. What we want to do is drop this down and select PLM Vista Projects. And then we're going to add an existing library. So I'm going to left click on that. And here we get a search. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in macro, click on that, and it will search the platform for a macro. I've done this a few times. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select the very top one for me. You should only have one. The minute you select it, it starts to pull all this information in. So you can see I have the macro doc wizard here. So we're good there. I'm gonna go ahead and close this and you'll notice that the macro doc wizard now resides inside of here. If I press the run button, we will get our technical documents dialog. Next, here it's asking for what location. So I'm gonna come over here, we will get this window. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my desktop. I have a folder on here, setup sheets. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna hit next. And this will take a second. It's gonna do some generating. There's quite a few operations in here. So this is gonna work through every one of these operations, creating a setup sheet for us. When it is completely done, we will get a dialog window that will appear asking us to take a look. So here we go. Got this to save the document. I can hit finish. In a browser window, I'm going to drag this browser window over. You get this. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit finish. And we're going to take a look at this browser window again. So here's my browser window. These are your operations. This is again table of contents. So here, for instance, if I go to my 3H drill, you'll notice that I now have a breakdown of all of this. This is the default design. You can customize this if you know XML. So that is available for customization. Now let's take a look at code output, specifically our G code output. A couple things that we need to be aware of. We've set our preferences to utilize iCAM foundations early on, but we also need to make sure that we're using the correct post-processor words table. To do that, we need to go to our resource configuration view. So normally it would be here in our activities process view. Click on resource configuration view, then right click, and we're gonna actually edit our NC resources. If we edit local parameters, that edits just for this particular cell. I want to change this in this machine that is here. So I'm going to select Edit NC Resource, and our machine parameters will open up. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the numerical control panel, and I'm going to make sure a few of these things are checked and turned on exactly the way we want to see it. So for here, we want to make sure ICAM Foundations is selected. Should be based off of our preferences that we set in the first video when we started our series. We want to make sure that our iCAM post-processor table is being used. So this is our words table. The default is not going to work with iCAM Foundation. So just make sure that you come in here and you select either inch or metric. Should only have two options. In my case, I'm using inch. We'll pull that FANUC. So it's always going to default to that one. We can change when we post-process, so don't, don't worry. The output will be ISO and then my code extension. I'm going to do NC. Now, when we go to view this, based off of the file extension, that's what opens to view the actual G code. Sometimes 
what you view the G code in is tied to some other application that requires licensing and it may not open. Here, we just want to make sure that we use set rapid feed rate at start of operations. And from there, we're going to go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to go back to my activities process view. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this. If I left click, we always want to make sure that we force the compute toolpath prior to outputting. From there, I'm going to go to my analysis and output tab. And on that tab, we have generate NC code. I'm going to left click on that and we get generate NC output interactive. Here, we're going to take a look at the in and out tab. First thing I want to take a look at is what's selected. So we can control how we post out. Here I'm selecting by the programs. We can also post out by NC file containers. The other option would be part operation or manufacturing program. So part operation, that takes that upper level and posts everything out and then manufacturing program. We can control one file based off of these selections here. Each tool change would have its own file. Each machining operation could have its own file, so on and so forth. I'm going to change the name. The container name is going to be test container. And then the file I want to output is going to be labeled as two. My extension will be NC based off of what we set. And then we have a few options here. This checkbox will actually keep anything that you've already posted. By default, it is unchecked. So basically what's going to happen is when you post process, it will delete what was previously in the folder or in the container and replace it with anything new. So if you want to start tracking this and tracing what you're outputting, you may want to tick this. And then there's some other things that are pretty self-explanatory here. So tool motions, we can control these on the fly for post-processing. Remember, if you want to change these, you must select the button and then you will be able to utilize it. Formatting, same principle here. We can turn these on and off. NC code tab is the one I'm interested in. You'll notice our post processor is selected here. I can also change that again. I am going to use the FANUC post processor. Do not tick this and do not press this button at this time. This button right here will open up the post processor developing environment and will allow you to use ICAM Foundations to develop your post processor. We're gonna go ahead and hit execute and we will run through our entire program. We have posted out. I'm gonna just close the NC errors. Here we can see we have a results tab. And in that results tab, we get a couple log files. We get our NC file and our app source file. The app source is coming from NC Shopflow Programmer. And then the NC is the translated code. So from here, if we just right click on this and select view, we will get our code. So this is the FANUC posted code. We'll go ahead and minimize that. We also get our app source. So I can open app source in other areas too. From the view, you can then save as. Let's close this and see exactly what transpired. So if I go to my tree, you'll notice that I have my test container sitting in here. If you want to look at the code again, just right click on it and go edit NC files container. And then we view these. Again, I can open this up to view it. And there we have it. If I then file save as, and then I can save it to whatever I want, anywhere I want, and then send it to the shop floor. You have successfully created setup sheets and produced G code to go to the shop floor.